Hey everyone, I'm Daryl, and today we're going to show you how we raise pigs in the forest. The benefits of raising pigs in the woods are that it provides continuous shade, places for water to collect, bedding for nest, and areas to root. And this also satisfies a pig's natural curiosity. They like to explore, they love to root in the ground, they love to find things. It's one of the reasons why we give them a, a substantial area so that they have plenty of time to go around and look through stuff. They tend to find a lot of trash for us and clean up these areas. And it has a variety of forage for them to uh, nourish themselves. Things to consider when picking an area to raise your pigs are, how are you gonna get feed to them? How are you gonna provide water for them? And do you need to provide shelter? You also need to consider how you're gonna load your pigs onto your trailer when it's time for processing and how you will move them to the next area when it's time to rotate them out of here. One of the first things to consider is what the perimeter of your area is gonna look like because this is where you're gonna set up your fence. You're gonna to need to walk this area. You're gonna to have to clear this area with your ax or your loppers or maybe even a chainsaw. You're gonna need a nice clear path so that that wire is highly conductive and is easy to maintain. The gear you need for raising pigs in the woods are pretty simple. Uh, they are T-post with insulators like this one, push post, wire, T-post pounder, invaluable, an ax, some loppers. The axe and loppers are important for clearing a path so that you have no interference with your wires. Uh, the T-posts with the insulators are what create the tension to keep the fence nice and tight. And the push posts help keep it off the ground on those longer runs. So the wire we use is a poly wire. This is a two metal braid. Uh, what I'm talking about is it has two metal wires and that's what conducts the electricity and they're woven around a plastic core. So this is fairly cheap. Um, it will break with uh, not a whole lot of tension on it, um, but it is simple to repair. You can just tie it back together and the connectivity is still good. So the majority of the work is really planning and clearing your path. Uh, this is very important because the clearer the path is, the more conductivity you get in your fence and the better chance you have of keeping the pigs in the area that you want them. After you have decided upon your area and cleared your fence line, the next step is to start setting your T-posts. Your T-posts are going to be set at your corners and at every major angle change. You're going to need insulators. You can adjust the height of the wire by moving the insulator up and down the T-post. And this is what supports your poly wire. And this is also where you're going to apply tension. In between your T-post, you're going to use either a plastic push post or you can use a metal rod with insulators on them to help support your fence on longer straight runs of fence. The push post also assist with those changes in elevation where you may be going uphill or maybe going across a divot that you don't want those pigs to be able to get through. We use a two wire system here at our farm and we try to put the bottom wire at a piglet's nose height and then the top wire at an adult's nose height. This prevents the smaller piglets from just pushing the bottom wire up and taking the shock on the back and they'll just run right through it. The top wire being at an adult's nose height prevents the adult from just stepping over the wire because as pigs get larger, they don't really jump. The last step is to run your wire. One of the things to consider before you run your wire is where you're gonna put your gate and where you might load your pigs from. 
This gate is a separate wire that is attached to the main fence. The handle that we use has a spring inside the plastic. The plastic is non-conductive. It has the metal that runs all the way through so that the charge, the electric charge can continue. You need to make sure that the wire is nice and tight, but don't over tighten it because the wire breaks easily when put under too much tension. You will also need a way to energize your fence. We use a two jewel solar charger to provide the electricity to our fence. Now with solar chargers, they need to be in full sun for as much of the day as possible. This way they provide the maximum amount of charge and the batteries get replenished. One of the requirements that you're gonna need is you're gonna need some type of feeder. Now you can feed with just a plastic cut in half barrel. Um, I'm really getting, starting to like these. Uh, we do put some uh, wood on there to stabilize them, but they work really well and they're very durable. You can feed in old metal barrels like this one down here. Uh, this works best for bigger pigs because they're taller. The little guy can't really get in there. Or another option is you can build these wood feeders. I've had decent luck with these. They do tend to wear out though because pigs are rough on everything. Basically all this is is just a wooden trough. You can also feed pigs on the ground. This is perfectly acceptable because uh, they will root around the area and get all of the feed there. Uh, my recommendation, feed somewhere dry, kind of under a tree like I've done here. Uh, the most important thing that you want to do is ensure that all your pigs have access to feed. So you'll need multiple feeders or multiple feeding areas. We recommend that you move your feeders often so that this lessens the impact in those areas. When considering how to get water to your pigs, there are several different types of waters that you can use. Some require continuous hose access and some you can just fill occasionally. This is one of the ones that we use here. It has a float valve in the opening here. And this allows us to control the depth of water continuously. This gives the pigs free access to water all the time and you don't have to check it as much as some of the other options. Another type of waterer that we use are these barrel waterers with the nipples down here. Now for us here, we're close to a water point. We have a hose that runs right into the top of it. We turn it on and allow it to fill. If you're gonna use this style of water, it would be very beneficial to you to ensure that you have hose access so that you can fill it easily. You don't want to have to haul five gallon buckets through the woods to fill this. This is about 50 gallons, so that would take you about five trips. Uh, and that's something that you want to avoid. Something else that you can use for water is tubs or stock tanks. The problem with these is they tend to be too tall for small piglets to drink from and the big pigs like to get in them and take baths, which muddies the water up and also spills a lot out. As far as shelter goes, adult pigs can make do with the natural features of the forest. Young animals or piglets may need something more substantial like this shelter here to keep warm in a, in a wet environment or when the temperature drops. On this property, we had some freestanding structures already. So we just incorporate those into the pig's area. There are times that you may need to supplement your pig's bedding uh, with some straw or pine shavings. Uh, we typically don't have to do that for the older pigs, but when a sow is giving birth or we have young piglets still around, we like to give them some straw so that they can kind of burrow in there and stay warm and dry. 
It's important to remember that pigs will dig wallows. They utilize these wallows to stay cool because they cannot sweat. In drier conditions, you may need to fill it full of water. When raising pigs in the woods, one of the things you have to consider, and I mean have to, is their potential impact upon the land and the area that they're in. The impact that the pigs have and your goals will determine how long you leave them in a certain area. If your goal is to start transforming your forest into pasture, you're gonna to wanna to leave them there a little shorter time because all you want them to do is to clear up the, the underbrush, the loose leaves, pine needles, and those uh, logs that are starting to break down so that you can come in and seed after you have moved the pigs off that area. If these are gonna be continuous uh, rotationed pig paddocks, you could get away with leaving them there a little bit longer, but once the impact starts to expose some of the larger roots of trees and you start to see that they start breaking a lot of the smaller roots, that is definitely a time to get them out of that area because they will kill those trees or those trees will just fall over with strong winds. Raising pigs in the forest allows you to utilize uh, portions of your property that you can't use for crops or grazing ruminants. This is the reason why we enjoy raising pigs in the forest. It allows us to utilize that property that we couldn't do anything else with that's just sitting there. We also feel like the variety of forage that the pigs have access to and eat here in the forest adds to the flavor of their meat. If you're considering raising pigs in the woods, I hope this video helps you. If you're interested in seeing our other animals that we raise on the farm, check out our farm tour video right here. Thanks for watching.